In the early 60s, the United States Navy began training a small force of dolphins and other marine mammals. The goal was to protect our shores and ships by hunting for underwater mines, recovering test equipment, and even intercepting unauthorized swimmers. For decades, the U.S. Navy's marine mammal program has been highly classified, like the vast majority of military and defense projects. This classification has led to some pretty wild speculation by the media and animal activists who say these animals are being used as weapons. There was even a movie in the 1970s called The Day of the Dolphin that was about two dolphins that are trained assassins. The U.S. military has denied that their animals have ever been used for offensive measures, but that hasn't stopped the rumors and speculation. I'm KP, a marine biologist with over a decade's worth of experience working with marine mammals. The world of marine biology is surprisingly small, especially when you're talking about working hands-on with marine mammals. And because of that, I've actually worked personally with several marine biologists that were part of the Navy's marine mammal program. Hi, my name is Redacted. I worked for Redacted for Redacted years. But first, let's dive a little deeper into the history and purpose of marine mammals in the military. It began in 1959 when the U.S. Navy used captive Pacific white-sided dolphins for hydrodynamic studies. The original goal was to improve torpedo performance. And Pacific white-sided dolphins are shaped like torpedoes, so very, very effective, I'm sure. However, the dolphins' incredible intelligence, natural sonar, deep diving physiology, and trainability opened the door for new possibilities. The first major breakthrough was when the marine biologists realized these animals could reliably work untethered in the open ocean. Let's take a look. This is the cool stuff, when they clip these onto things. And they literally, so, oh my gosh. Okay, so that's super cool. So they don't just go down and clip it. When you see them tugging on it, it looks like an accident, but that's what they train them to do. They train them to go down and tug a few times to ensure that it is attached. Like, this is a like a several step behavior. I need you to take this from me. Go down to this item, find the item, find a place to attach this, attach it correctly, then yank on it to make sure that it is attached and then come back to me. For me, it's really interesting because it represents the, the idea that the animal is thinking through every step, is planning ahead for what they're going to do and then executing that. Let's remember, these animals aren't wild. Typically, they live and are trained in enclosed habitats, known as sea pens. But they are given regular opportunities to forage in the open ocean. As we see in this study published last year, year, the U.S. Navy strapped cameras to their dolphins and then set them loose in San Diego Bay. That is so wild. Like, you can see them moving their heads around, like obviously trying to like triangulate on stuff and just constantly echolocating. Even though these animals are given free reign to hunt in San Diego Bay, they almost always return to their handlers. But I do say almost always because there is a pretty famous exception. The beluga whale named Vladimir. This beluga appeared in Norway wearing a camera harness labeled Equipment of St. Petersburg. He was obviously very used to humans and would seek them out for food and attention. Trainers from SeaWorld were flown in to assess the whale and found that he responded to hand gestures and was clearly familiar with trained husbandry behaviors such as ventral and dorsal presents. This has led people to dub Vladimir a Russian spy because yes, Russia also has a marine mammal military program. The U.S. briefly considered using beluga whales along with almost two dozen other species, but determined that belugas weren't ideal for this kind of work. I'm not surprised. In my experience, belugas tend to be extremely slow moving animals. So if you're looking for a task to be done with any kind of vigor, a beluga whale is probably not high on your list. Imagine if they tried to use sea <laughs> <laughs> For more on this, let's talk to my friend who was involved in this program. Okay, so what species of marine mammals do you use in the Navy? So we use Atlantic bottlenose dolphins and California sea lions. Oh, look at his little like Captain America outfit. And why does the Navy use marine mammals? 
So dolphins echolocation is the most sophisticated sonar that the world has. Both dolphins and sea lions have excellent low light vision and directional hearing so that they're able to navigate murky and low light water situations. The highly evolved biosonar of a bottlenose dolphin and underwater vision of a sea lion can easily detect human swimmers. In fact, naval trained dolphins have reportedly saved more lives in the open ocean than the actual human divers. Both dolphins and sea lions also are able to dive hundreds of feet down below the surface without risk of decompression sickness. Okay, but why don't they just use underwater drones? Underwater drones are actually no match for any of these animals. In early 2023, the U.S. Congress debated ending the use of marine mammals to hunt for underwater mines and use drones instead. The problem is, as my friend mentioned, there is no technology that currently equals a dolphin's unique ability to locate these mines. So Congress barred the Navy from retiring its dolphins until new mine countermeasure systems are developed that can rival these marine mammal senses. Are there any other benefits to this program other than national security? Absolutely. So caring for the Navy's animals has resulted in 1,200 scientific publications across the Navy's history of the program. Now we saw this earlier in the year when the Navy Marine Mammal Program published a study on aging dolphins. The Navy found biomarkers in dolphins that could help explain why some animals, including humans, age faster and develop more age-related diseases than others. I mean, I, I, I just think it's super cool. I think it's very clear that the animals are enjoying what they're doing. Nobody questions um, how much dogs like to work, right? When you see uh, working dogs, they, they love what they're doing. They're excited about it. And so for these animals, that's the case. You can clearly see that they're enthusiastic participants. And it is also true that not every dolphin or sea lion is cut out for this kind of work. For example, we did open water research with stellar sea lions at the Vancouver Aquarium when I worked there. But we had several sea lions that were not cut out for open water work. It didn't suit them, and so we didn't use them for this. Just like not every dog is cut out to do service work, some dogs just want to play with a stick. If every marine mammal program was like that, I think that would be really neat. The animals still get to like experience the, the ocean and super cool. I wish it wasn't so cool. Redacted. You'll find more information as always down in the descriptions below, as well as links to the sources. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and hit me up with any questions down in the comments. I'll catch you next time. I'm gonna watch it again, obviously. Oh, I found my attach point right here. Yep, oh yeah, oh it's attached, okay. You're not gonna get any useful information out of me, this is just. <laughs> and why does the Navy use marine mammals? Not to do that. Oh, okay. No, no, you can look at me, it's just, it was the smirk <laughs> for me. And even intercepting unauthorized swimmers. Sounds terrifying. Can you imagine? A sea lion's life. A, like a trained, like, military sea lion <laughs> comes up on you when you're diving.